Okay. Yep. So um, we were last week we were defining some of these um, generic tags that we mostly use, and we're giving them values. So again, I wanted to add for each one also. If you check the um the website, let me see. So most of their text are in white. So mostly, so if it's H1, H2, or anyone that we're going to be using, it's mostly going to be white because most of the headings are in white color. So it's also okay if we can just add a defined value for it. So I'm just going to define um the H1 tags, H2. H3 and H4. So I'm going to give them a color white also. Yep. So there is that. So now, uh, oh, okay, I, I said I added a logo image to it so now we can add that image to this um text that we have here that says logo so we can just add the image the source is called logo okay is it um logo dot nc so it's a png file so we have a logo dot png Yeah, so we see this, let's refresh this. Oh, that looks very big. So we're going to style it and change the width and the height very soon, but for now, that is what we have. So then, um, so we can begin styling this header top because the header top also contain this logo. So, um, we can have the class dot header top and here um so what we really want to do is that we want this um this header we have the logo we have um the drop down and we also have a button over here so we just want them to you know be on the same line so which is this 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 i mean this and this so this one's yeah so these three so we can just i can use a display of flex and then I can also use the justify content to be um like space between and use the space between and if we need to change it, we can change it. And then we can give some some padding because we already um <clears throat> at the top here we already said the padding for the, the universal property should be zero. So that means the top padding will also be zero. We don't we just want we want to give it some space so that we we can at least be able to see something. So we can use um yeah, I already changed the font size to be 10 pixel for um for the default value. So this one, if we use the, let's say, for example, if we use three rem as the padding now, it's going to take the root element um, value and then convert it to this. So that that means we're going to have ten pixel, which is the default value times three. So it's going to be thirty pixel. So that way we can. But in this case, I'm going to reduce it so that we don't have too many values. Or maybe three rem two might be fine. So we can use three rem. And then, um, so, so that is the top. We don't want too much space. You know, we have the top, the right, the bottom, and the left. So we're going to use that. And then there's some space between um, 
this guy, the, that means this three value at the top here and this one. So we can also give it either some margin or some padding. But in this case, I'm just going to use the padding so that I don't have to specify another margin value. So let's say we have, let's say we have 41. We have zero. We have 31. So that means the top is the um three rem the right is for the 40 rem we have the bot the bottom to be zero and then we have the left to be 30. so for this one we will probably either specify padding for it or we specify margin as the, as we go on we'll see okay so now we have the three of them on the same um line because that is what the um the display property does so also we can um do similar thing for the we can style the logo also so yeah we can give it let's give it a class because it's too big so let's give it a class of logo i'm just going to give it an alternate text also and say logo. So here we can then come to the side. Um, so we can specify the logo. We can give it um, maybe a width of you know, be two of them, and or we can use the max width also. So the maximum should be that, and the um height should be. We can give it, let's say, two of them. Let's just see the way it looks, and then we can decide if that is fine or not. Okay, that looks terribly small. So we can um increase it by say this one we can give it 14 rem and or 15 rem and then this one we can give the height let's say 5 gram so that's 50 pixel so let's see what we have okay we can we can we can do this is okay i mean it doesn't have to be pixel perfect but that will do it. So let's leave for that. Then we can also move on to this, this drop down and the signing. So for this one, we already have a class, I believe. Yeah, we call it class signing. And then we have this drop down, and then we have this um signing value. So let's say dot signing so what we want to do for this one is let's see the way it looks and then side we need to do so this signing we have two values here so we can say um we can also make it a flex item so that way we can you know give it a property of maybe spacing just within these two values without affecting this guy over here so yeah just like the way it is there's some spacing and we can we can also do that and um also we need to style this individually also to get okay so, so let's try it then we have the i can give it a display flex so that is a flex inside another flex. And then I can give it a gap of three rem. Let's see the way it looks. Um, 
okay, we we'll not really not really looking so good, but we'll deal with that. Um, let's do the alignment. That's the um the vertical alignment. So we can align self to center. Yeah, excuse me for a minute. Um, so let's see what we have. Okay, yeah, so now we have the gap three pixel, and this one will align both of them vertically. So at least it looks better than before, but we still have to style it anyway. So that is for the uh for the signing. So now we can now um style the 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 drop down and then after that we sign the um the signing text so we can have we can say the signing of the um select and then yeah we can um give it a padding Point five OM. Um, we can also give it a font size. Let's give it a font size of maybe ten pixel, which is one M. Then we can also give the. Okay, let's let's even see something. So. Yeah, so the text is here. We have the, some padding between this and um the text between the borders of the um drop down, and then we have this rounded icon here beside it. So, um, what we can do is that we can so we already give it the font size. We give it the padding. We can also um give it a color because it's always white i believe and our own we still have black if you see the color of this is black but the color of this is white so i also give it a color and then another thing again is that we have this um drop down you see the it's kind of rounded it has a rounded corner at the four edges so we can also give it a border radius so we can give it maybe one m so let's see what we have the way it looks before we continue okay this looks <laughs> Okay, yeah, this is not looking too good. So we'll fix it. And this is too round and the text is too small. So let's see what we can change. Let's change this to one point, maybe 1.4. Let's this is too round. So let's turn it down to like 1.2. And also the text um from left is too close. This is too close to this. We can we are not even able to see the text. So um let's just let's leave that for now and just so um we can also give it the like I said we have this rounded um stuff over there so we can give it a URL for the for the icon so we can take, let's go to this side. I think they have some, yeah, so we can take this one from here. We just copy, click, copy the SVG, and then 
um, we can come back here and here we can have, let me see if I can. So we can have, if we want to display this, the icon, so we have to use the data slash image, the icon. Yep, so we're going to have some, so that means, um, let me change this to double quotes. Yep. Okay, so this one. So we can remove these guys. So you just going to use a single quote around it. The fill can be none, but we're just going to remove this double quotes and use a single quote. to look. Uh, let's see if we get it. Let's see. No, not yet. Okay. Now let's see again. Okay, now we have something. All right, let me um let's give it let's just give it a no repeat so that the image is not um does not repeat. Uh, let's add some padding, let's see. Let's give it a a background. Let's position its left. 
then one m from the left and then from the top let's position it 50 percent Okay, let's give this background color of um, a black background, but then we're just going to add some opacity to it. Okay, so at least this looks uh, okay, but the image itself is what we, we are not able to um, see correctly. So let's see what we can do to solve our problem. Okay, I think I don't miss something here. Let's give it some width and height also. So I guess if it's too big, so we have this as always 18 pixel and then the heights it should be 18 pixel. We still need Um, another thing we could do is we can, we can add the logo beside this text here. But if we do that, let's see, let me copy it again. So if we add it here, let's see what we have if we have it here. Okay, it's like something is overshadowing it. Okay. Yeah, the image is there, but it's just not showing. Okay, let's see what else we can do. Let me see the one inside here. Uh, let's change this color to white if because the image is there, but it seems like the background color is overshadowing it. Okay, yeah. 
So this we are with this one too is not showing the one we added here previously. So if we change this, if we do the same thing also. Although we don't need this anymore, but I just add it just to know that. Mm. Okay, maybe we can see it inside the drop down. Who knows? Well, since we're not using this, I don't want to waste too much time on it. So, yeah. So this is presently fine, I believe. Yeah, so now we have English Aspire. Is that the way it is? Yeah, I think, yeah. So just like this, then we have this beside it. Yeah, so, but just that I think this thing is a little bit longer than ours. We can either increase the width or leave it like that. So another thing um we can also um work on is the sign the signing button. So we can have the link to let's see this. So we can have now before you go to the signing button, I yeah. think you did after uh copying uh that image so yep. from that website so you did some manipulation maybe you can uh try to explain um okay so what i did is that you know that i um, i'm using a double a double quote here so if you put a double quote inside this double quote then it's going to create a problem like you won't be able to view it so that is the reason why i changed all the, like for example, the properties of these SVGs, I change them to single quotes. For example, this um, double, this is supposed to be a double quote. In HTML, you normally have double quotes in it. In like, I think we also had this one here last week, yeah. So they are all double quotes, but I just changed the double quotes to a single quote. And um, I added this with an ice myself because that is, we want it to be like that irrespective of the size of the screen. And also I did the same thing. I changed this double code to a single code. And then for the color, uh, the only thing I changed again is the color. Let me see. Okay, that's it. Okay, now we are looking for to can't find it. Okay, no, no, yeah. All right, let me just back up a little bit. Yeah, okay, so this is it. So we have the stroke to be, instead of the current color that was the, the value, I changed it to white. So that way it was, that was the reason why we couldn't see it previously because of it's taking the um the color the background color of the of that drop down so we couldn't see it so now um we are able to like view it the, the thing is dealing with svg is a little bit different compared to images that is the challenge but um once you copy the the svg you can just have it in this format and um at the last end i also added no repeat so that is for the background repeat properties i don't want the um the image or the svg to repeat over several maybe several background um for that drop down so i just want it just that single value so that's why i use the no repeat value and then for the background position i position it left and i said one 10 pixel from the left I position it 10 pixel from the left and I give it um 50% from the top. So that way we can have it in a like in middle position within the drop down. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. So okay. but what of that SVG plus XML? Are you the one that adds plus yeah, XML so this one or 
Yeah, so this one, I added this one because of the, we are dealing with SVG. So it, it's not just, it's not like the regular background whereby you just add, um, you just put the name of the image and then it just shows. So this one has a specific format that you have to use. And once you have this, um, this format and then you paste your SVG, then that should be fine. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So also, um, we have the signing button. That is the next thing we say we're going to. Let me see. Wait, where is it over here? So this is the yeah, this is the signing button. Although we use a link, but we're just going to make it look like a button. So we can have signing. You can also use a button, but you know, anyone works fine. We have the signing, but in this case. It's inside the class signing, but since that is the only anchor tag we have, so I'm just going to use, just going to use signing A. So I don't have to, you know, give it its own special class since it's really not necessary. So I'm going to give it a font size. I'm going to give it a font size of maybe two rem, and then. I'm also going to give it a font weight of bold. Also, um, I'm going to give it a padding between those texts. So I can give it a padding of one M. And also the, um, let's see it. Okay, nothing changed yet. But text also has some padding around the border. And also we also have this rounded border around there. So we can also give it that. So the padding is one when we have the fonts to be bold, the font size to them. Why is it not? It's so small. Okay, we, we, we can change that. And then we also have the like the rounded border. So that is the border radius. And also there's a red background for the button. So we can give it the background color. Or oh, do we actually so, define uh any class sign? Yeah, that is what we define for this one. Oh, I say sign in, yeah. not sign. Okay. That's a mistake. Oh, that is the reason why we didn't see the effect of the change that I made earlier. Okay. So yeah, we have the class signing and then the background color is red. And also, um, like I say, we have the um the grounded corner, so we can give it a border radius. So the border radius, we can give it um maybe 0 0.5 one. So let's see the way it looks and then adjust it. Okay, this looks too big, way too big. So the text is too big. Can give it maybe 1.8. Still too big. So we still have 1.8. Let me see. 1.7. Okay, 1.5 might be okay. 1.5, 1.4, maybe 1.6 or 1.0. No, 1.6 is big. Yeah, let's just leave it at 1.5. So just gonna use 1.5 here. Okay. So this that should be fine. Maybe it's even a little bit big. But yeah, we're not trying to you know be pixel perfect because it's just going to take a lot of tweaking and that's going to require much more time. So um, like I said, we can have this. It seems too big, so let's have this as more M. And then the rounded corners, we can also have it a little bit smaller. Let's give it like a point three values. Yeah, we just have to be tweaking those values just to 
if we want to get it uh, perfect. So that is for the this um heading. Now we have these guys over here. So and then they are so that is the header content that we define here. So that is the other contents. We have this, we already gave them some default values, but so let's see what we can define for it. So I'm just going to give it other content. And then, so the other content, let's just analyze the way it looks and then let's decide what we can do. So in the other context also, we can, like I said, we're going to use flex for this um, side. So that way, I just wanted us to explore both flex and grid. Then here we use grid, although we can use flex everywhere, but just to see the way it works and not. So here we can also use flex, but in this case, we can even do a text center of, I mean, a text align of center, but we're going to use flex. But in this case, instead of using the default, Go that we've used at the top here yeah, now we're going to use column so that way we just say you know same logic just different um value for the direction so i'm going to do a display of flex also and then i can give it a flex direction okay so now that we say it it's a flex item so if we refresh it, you see it's just going to go on a straight line. So we have to define it that the direction. Is column. And then let's give um the spacing which is the padding. You can give it 100 pixel. So let's see what we have. Okay, so this one is like the here. So let's give it text. Now it's in column, right? So let's give it a text line or center and let's give some maybe some letter spacing so let's see okay so now we have The letter space is too much, and but we already have that at the center. So, okay, so now. This we still need some fonts um value for it. So let's say um we have that is for the H1, we can give it a they have different values. So let's just see what we can give it. For the H1, we can give it a font size. maybe five one and then for the H2 also we can give it something like three them and we can also make it maybe we can give it let's see what we have before we change. Okay this looks kind of too big. Yeah, it's too big. 
And this is just kind of too big. Then let's see. Oh, maybe for them. Um, Okay, maybe just looks like that. Let's leave it. I don't know. Then this one we can just reduce this to like maybe two point five gram, and then this text is kind of bold, so we can give it some value for the boldness. So we can give it a font weight. Let's give it five hundred. Let's see. Oops. Let's see. Let's use the bold property. Let's see the way it looks. Okay, that looks a little bit better. So this one also. Let's give it some some font weights. Okay. Then we also have this H3 also here, so we can also give it some property. So let's see, we have H3, we have Let's reduce this one to maybe 1.5 or 1.7. And let's reduce the boldness also. And let's see. Let's see what we have. Okay, so also there should be some like space between this text. So we can come to this one and give it a um a page in top. Say one one, and here we can also give it. Let's see. Let's give it. Let's see. Let's see how it looks on two to one. Then we're going to, and then change it. Okay, not too bad. Something this one one point nine. Okay, let's see. So um one thing we also need to to do is after the inside this content we have this class um header form and then inside the header form we also have the this input value and in the input value um we have it an input text so let me just give this a class so that if you want to also style it we can pick on those class And we have a text that says, let's give it, let me make this pan. And then it says, email, is it enter your email address or something? It says email address. And also give it a class. Okay, so here yeah, we already have the button, and um, we have 
but we, we did not specify the um the item with for it yet but we're going to do that okay yeah so let's now try to start this header form and then we move on to before that let's give it some spacing some margin between this and this so let's see what we have in HTML so that we can determine where to put it. So here we have, um, this is where the content stops for the heading, header top class. So from this header content, we can give it some margin. So let's go to the header content. Let's give it some margin top. So I'm going to give it, um, let's try 20 rem. If, if that's not enough, then we can pause it. Okay. So we can think, yeah, that space should be enough. So we can have that. Then we can also move on with the other content. So here we have the header content of H3, that's the header content of H3. And then the next one is the header form. So the header form, we can also, let's see the way it looks. So here we have this text box and then we have a button beside it and, um, the email address text. So what we can do is, so we can have the header form to also display flex. So that way it is going to be on the same, on the same line. And then we can justify the content to the center. Okay, so now we have the three at the same line. So let's give it some padding top so that you can um, have some space. So let's give it some padding top. So now we now have, um, that is the header form. So now we have the um the form place order, and we also have button inside of it. So let's type the, the button, then we're going to deal with this. So I can say add a form that has button since we only have one button. So Inside this button, see, inside this button, I also have like a text at the top. Then I have this image, this um icon that we copy as VG icon. So this one is at the top, this is at the bottom. So um what we can also do is okay, I gave this a pitting the other time. Okay, yeah, so I think that should be fine. We can adjust it later if you need to, but yeah, it's in much. So here yeah, we can also give it the content a display of flex and then we can give it a padding of say 1.5 or 1.6 or 1.7 that's so then we have the font size also and give it a font size let's give it a 30 pixel and then we can also give it a color since this is going to be white. So that means the, the text on the button should be white. And um, also the background, the color of the um, text is, I think the background color is like red or something. I'm sure. Yeah. Maybe not completely red, but it's red. 
Yeah, so we just need to use the regret the same color as this one. So we can have um background color. And then we can also have the border radius to give it a rounded color. see we have this rounded corner so 0 0.5 when and then let's see what else we can add let's refresh this okay like this border is not the same color so let's give it a border color And let's also give it some font weight so that we okay. So um we have get started and then we have this beside it. At least it's coming together. So the next thing we can also style is that we can also style the SVG values there. So we can have the these guys, then the SVG the width. We can give it the width of maybe two point six, and then. We can give the um the stroke color that's the color of the SVG. We can give it also a white. And we can also align the item to center. So that way it's going to be aligned the same way. Okay. Not quite. Uh, let's see this. Okay, it has the bigger um values. So so the text. Let's see what we can do. The font size. Did I just say font ordinary? Okay, okay, so now, yeah, so now this is getting looking okay. Okay, so what else can we change? I think, um, okay, we just wanted to work on the SVG. Yeah, we already gave it some values, but let's see if we can make it a little bit bigger because it seems smaller. Even our text looks kind of bigger, so let me just reduce the text instead, instead there. So the font size, we can give it maybe two then will be fine. The font weight is 500. Okay, maybe we can do with this. Let me increase the... No, that should be fine, but let me just give it a little bit. Okay. okay. So the next one is after this button, beside the button we have um we have the what's it called the form place order. So here we can also get have the font place order. Okay, so the form place order also has um the so there is the inputs and then 
we have this text inside the input. So first of all, let's see where we have it here. Yeah, this one, we have it side by side. So just going to have the display flex. But in this case, I'm going to use the flex basis to change the lens. So let's see the way it looks. Okay, we're still going to remove this, but let's leave this for now. And also inside the form, we have this input. So we can also style the input inside the form. So let me just have the placeholder. So now we can give it a background color because they have like a grid background color. So we can use the arrow GBA to give it, let's give it six, six, six. Then we are going to reduce the um, opacity. So that's the transparency value. So that is going to reduce to 0 0.2. So, and we're going to give it the, the color inside of it is kind of also like a gray color, the text. And what, what else? We can give it font size. We can give the font size. Let's give maybe one point something. And we can also give the, there's a border around it also. We can also give it a border value border radius of 0 point something and um we can give it a width so let's see okay yeah the is it the border or the padding with why okay yeah the border seems to be too thick Let's see. And hold on. Let's see what we have here. Okay, so we have a border color inside of it. Let me see the border. Let's see what we can do. We can have the border color to be white also. Okay. Yeah, but Something like this. We can change. Okay. Okay, let's see, let's give it a border width. Okay, hold on. I think the background is kind of power this screen. Then use something like 0 0.8. Let's see if it's going to work.
Um, okay, this is. Let's see if I'm going to get Okay, yeah. All right, let's just leave this one now. Then we can come back if we need to change something more. But right now we have this text beside it. So we can try to place this in using the um um the I also discuss about the position properties. So we can use the position um maybe it's fixed or we can use you know the relative kind of positioning to position element inside the container. So we can have since we have this um form place order this text inside this form place order so we can have this form place order to have the position to position is relatively to it so position relative so we can have the the, we call the class floating label. So we can have the inputs and um, so it has some of those classes we can use the focus. So when this input is focus, how do we want it to um, to position? But then let's say we have other input value on this on the um page we can select use this symbol to say that we want to select all the classes that precede the input i mean the float all this floating label that we see any inputs that precedes this floating label so we can have this dot the floating label So what we can do is for this one, we can position it um, like maybe top, center, and other values to it. So we can give it a top of, let's say 0.21, and we can give it the bottom of, Can give it the bottom of zero and left of zero point two. So when the input is focused, that is what we are starting for. So we can give it a zero point two rem. And also, let's say when it is not focused and like the way we just have it, we can also start the floating label just like that the floating label to be, we already positioned this to be relative. So we're going to position the floating label relative to the form pay order, form place order rather. So we're going to give it a position of absolute. So we're going to position it absolute. And we're going to give it the left of, Give it one one the top skip maybe one one and then the font size you can give it since we've been using maybe one point seven and we can give it some padding also. Also, we can give it the color. Let's see what we have so far. Okay, so now we have um we have it inside the box. So what we can also do is that we can we have to space this 
there should be some space between these two. So we can just do that. Let's do that first. So that one is the button and the content. So let's see. This is where we have the button and then the content is this. That's the place from place. So let's see. So I'm just going to um I would go inside the button. What did I have in it? Okay, this is it. Yeah, this is the button. So let me just give it a margin. A margin is it left, right? Margin left. Margin left. Let me just give it oh maybe one way. Let's see the way it looks. Okay, let's give it two rem. Okay, you can leave it like this. Yes, that's not too bad. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, so here we have the email address inside of it. So let's give it a big color. Yeah, we have it pure white. So let's see. Well, it looks like something is gray. If we use, let's say six, six, six. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we can leave that the way it is for now. Okay, so what else do we need? Okay, so this one we're saying that when it is for this is the inputs. Yeah, this is what we do. We say when it is focused, then when the input is focused and it is preceding this class, then just align it to the um to the from the top that's with relative to this same um input value. So it's going to be from the top, the bottom, and then to the left. And we can also give it the font size. So we can give it a font size so that it's going to maybe just showing a little bit, maybe one when. So if we have it, yeah, so it's just going to shrink to one when and then only. Okay, yep. So we also need to have it when when we are not focused on it. So what we can do is we can give it another property over here. So we can say that when the input is not focused, so when it is not focused, 
then we're going to class of floating label. Okay, so this is when it is valid. So we have to add it that when it is valid, that is when you should do that so that we, it's not, yeah, it's not. Yeah, the color is kind of black. Let's see what they are. Okay, so the color is white here. So, we can change the color also. Also, when it is focus, we can also do this, reduce the opacity of it or just leave it the way it is. Um, okay, so we want to change the color, I believe. So the color of the Impute itself. We selected white over here, but it, oh, sorry, this is for the border. Okay, this is where we selected the color previously. So let's see, the color is white. Um, let's see the way it looks now. Okay, color is white. So, ah, excuse me, Latin. Yep. So, what is that? Uh, the impute focus and floating label, and so on. And that last one, floating label. So, what are they doing differently? So, we're saying that for this one, we say that, yeah. um, any input values that is focused and it is preceding this floating label. So here we have, the, where is the floating label? This is the floating label. So the floating label, this input precede the floating label. So we're saying that we now want to, we now want to style this floating label to this, values so which means it's going to have it at top of two rem bottom of you know this value that we specify and it's going to be relative to this that we already have this place so that so this one we're saying that also when the input is not focused remember this one is when the input is focused but this one is saying that when the input is not focused and we have a valid text inside the inside that input. So when it is not focused and it's valid, so when the input is not focused and it's valid, then also style the font, the floating label with this specified tag. So this one, if we have when it focus only, if I remove this, so we're saying that when it is focus, do this. If I refresh this, right? So when it is focus, it's going to you know do it the way we want. It's going to um, modify the value to top, bottom, the font size. So we just make it smaller, right? But, okay. So when we have, let's say the value onto it and then we remove the focus, it's going to also go back to the position that it is initially once we lose the focus. Yeah. Until we have the focus, that is when it's going to go back up. 
when we lose the focus, it's going to um come back to the middle. So what we are now saying is that if so, what this one is now saying that if this input is not focused and there is a valid text inside of it, also you still need to then this um class should also have these properties. Mm -hmm. So that is just what okay. is basically the okay. So thank you so much. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, so we've basically done um let, let's refresh this back so that way we so now we have it. But well, we can also have some, let's see if we can have some paid into this text. From this, this is going to be paid in top. Let's give it all points. Let's see all points one when and then we see. Although we might want to have that this paid in top only when we have the valid um when it's valid, but I wouldn't want to create just make it a little bit more messy. Let's just leave it. So we have this and then we have this. Okay, I think um uh, maybe we can stop here for this. Let's just see what we have here and what we so this one is validation, it's mostly used um by use java devastate for it so oops sorry i refresh this um okay i thought it was okay so we have this and this we have this this we have this guy over here and we also have this guy although if you notice the phone style is also not the same so yeah, if you notice the font style is not the same. Um, let's see what we have. Yeah, so let's see what the, the font style they're using over here. So they say the font family is Netflix Sans. So this is probably their inbuilt, something they have internally. And then they are using other type. Although this one, we, we might be able to find them online, but I think this is mostly the, um, the main font family that they are using. But we're not going to bother much about trying to find our font family. So that way, okay, so we have this. We have this, and then we have this, we have this, and we have this, we have this. So this one looks like it's a little bit big or something. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. And then we have this email address. This border looks... Let's see if we can find something. One pixel FFF. No. 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 Let me just let me try the RGB.
Oh, let me just use the white ball. Maybe we're good with zero point two. Yes. Uh, let me just stop here for this class. We can trick these values and try to find a perfect match. No? So you showed me um some things last week. I, if you want to talk about it now, we can you can share your screen so that we can look. Tweets. Ah, uh, okay. So, you want me to share my screen, right? Yeah, yeah, you can share your screen. Okay. Maybe you can stop sharing yours. Okay, let me stop. Yeah. Uh, yes. So we have this. Yeah. Can you can you see it clearly, right? Yeah, you can see us. Yes. So here is the website I'm trying to. So this. So this website. So but what I did is that I tried to change the uh the color oh, and. The you are website. sharing your code file, not the website. Yes, here is the website, and so here. I'm not seeing the website. Are you sharing it? I see. Like, is it like you are sharing your source code file, or you are sh looking at the website itself? Because I so can't see I'm the source code file. Yes, I shared the three. Okay, I, I think I can see just one. Oh, so can you see the index.html? Yeah. Yes. What about style.css? Can you see it? No, 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 no. Okay. Okay, let me see. The text is actually showing, but it's not, but it's not like, it's more like you're in index.html. Yeah. I can't hear you, bro. Bro, you mean? Yeah, I so said the style of CSS type to is showing, but the page you are on is index does Okay. Okay. Let me Can you see this? I mean the website now. No, nothing's changing. It's just the index. Okay. I don't know how to do that.
Can you see the, the website now? Yes. Okay. That's the homepage. Yep. Okay. So here, you can see, do you find what you are looking for? Yeah. So yes or no. So I don't know uh, the, the property to use to define that yes or no. Um, let me, how does it look on the original website? Let me see that. So here it is. Okay, so do you find, I mean, you can use anchor tag, just like the um, signing we just did now, you, you know that we use an anchor tag, then we yes. use the border radius. So for your own case, you can use the border radius, maybe 0 0.5 or 0 0.3, anyone that works. And you can use an anchor, anchor tag to, you know, to just style it, give it a border color of maybe the blue color, the color, the text color, which is the normal blue, and then the background color is white. Okay. So okay. For the right. icon, the X icon, I don't know if you can use an SVG for that. If you can use an SVG. This X, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you can use an SVG. I saw an SVG called XMark on the ego icon. So you can use an XVG for it. Also, um, you see that there is a white border after yes. there's yeah, the background itself is like orange, then there's a white border. So you can also use a border yes. for this one to be border color to be white for the um, yes. Yeah. So okay. so so and after that, I think uh so we have talked about this, how to include all this icon. So I yeah. think I can do this now. Okay. So, uh, so another thing is, you see this to talk. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So how to include this? Um. Okay. Can you scroll? It can either maybe the position it fix or not. So let's. Okay. If you scroll. I think it's is I it fixed? Fix. Yes. Is it fixed? Yeah, if it is fixed, then you can also you know use the fix. But then um the the when you click on it, it normally takes you to the oh. first. Yeah. So the way you can do that is that you can give it like um an ID, like the header, you can give it an ID and then give it the ID, the ID hash or something. There's a way to. Okay. Okay. Uh, so. So this share and print also. What is it? So, you see this share. Share. Okay. Yeah. If you... and print. And points, yeah, those ones, I believe the point, you can use the JavaScript functionality for it. It's not really a CSS. If you click on it, and then it's going to open the point um, stuff. So you can use a, a JavaScript functionality for it. For the share, if you click on it, let me see the way it is. Because that, that is an icon beside it. Yeah, that is an icon beside it, okay. So that is an icon beside it, and then you can give it the text share. Okay, okay, I see. All right. So um, for this- So I think all this tax for individual duty, I think is what we did last week, right? Yes, yes, exactly. So we just have to define it as maybe a direct, the way we are doing now. Exactly. So you just have yeah. to define it. Yes, as EDA as EDA in this case, okay. and then you give it those style property. So okay. for the um for the top property, let me let me. So let's say you have um let me put something. Let's say you have an um anchor tag of ID. Let's say it is called top. Then or you have a div class of, I'm going to paste it in the chat now. So okay. let's say we now have an anchor tag, let's say go to top. 
So in this output tag href we now the equals to hash top. So let's say this is a div not a so so you can just give like the top of your maybe the header the id maybe top and then the go to top value then you just give it an href the hash top so it's just going to when you click it when you're at the bottom and you click it you'll be able to can you check the oh. chat i can you see what i put this thing yeah so exactly. I yeah. yes okay so okay so but if you look at this top here we have person yeah so if you click on person that is why we have tax for individual duty national population yeah. register yeah. so if you click on business so we have something else here yeah. so i don't know is that uh maybe anyway i don't understand what they did uh in that uh yeah, I, I mean, it's right. just like it's just like the one we did last week. So you have different values. The only thing that is different is just the value. It's the same um the same thing. So if you if you have the first one, you can give it um like the like let's say the first one is home. Then we under home we have list one, list two, list three. Then let's say the second one is maybe about us. The the under the about us we have also different thing. We have about about yeah. us one two and three or something so the same thing similar to this they have like person then they have um different values under that person and then they also have business and organization they have different value values under it but in this case they are clicking it the one we did we said when we over onto it i yes. believe so yeah, but in this case, they are using the click proper um click properties. Probably they are using most likely they are going to use JavaScript for all those. Um, they can use JavaScript for that the click property. But in our case, we are using over. So you can also just simulate sim um something like that using over. Like instead of the click, you can just do yours with you know when you over onto it. If you are using you know since you are using pure JavaScript um sorry CSS. Okay, okay, okay. So, which means that <laughs> we still have a long way to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, there's still more to learn, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing about yeah, still so, I mean, kind of broad. So, and this, um, this business and organization here, we have tax, fat, and duty. Do they use box? Yeah, so to this one design is... all this or. Yeah, it's either maybe they use an image, maybe they use an image for um sorry, are you talking about the icons that is there? What are you talking about? I so think I you, misunderstood your question. Yeah, you see that each each uh, I don't know what to call it. Yeah, if you if you obviously. over over, if you each, over onto it, yeah. So, yeah, it's like a box. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so let's say for example, we use um, let's say we use an um we can even use a div. You can use a div. There's a property. I, I think it's called pointer something that has like you can set the pointer property to cursor, I believe. I can't remember exactly the, but I know it's pointer something, maybe just pointer. So you can even use a, a div and then just say use the div over, or you can use an anchor tag and give it this kind of width or this length. And then when you, anchor tag already have um, over property. So you just say, when you over the anchor tag, the background should be like this color and give it any of any other color you want to specify for it. So you can use an anchor tag for it. Okay, okay, all right. So also you because of the um like the width and height that you want to specify for it, you might need to make the anchor tag use the display block property. So you have to convert it to a block um item so that way you can apply the box model property, which is like the um the margin padding and stuff like that, top and bottom. So that way you can be able to apply those properties to it. Okay. So and 
this color here. So if you look at this color, they have a way they mix all those color. Yeah, for this one, mm, um, I'm I'm not sure if maybe you um no no you can actually do it with Java um, with pure CSS, but you can there are some properties that like um it's normally called can't remember maybe translate that you can use it to like flip the the way the um the way an item is like you can use it to flip you probably have to just search down because i i don't i didn't make mention of it so it's it's called i think translates or let me even say yeah okay i mean transform yeah it's it's use transform property yeah transform yeah this is property called transform yeah so that transform property you can use it to rotate so you can check that property in the in that um Mozilla link that I pasted. So you can, when you click on each one, they are just going to show you how it's going to rotate and stuff like that. That um that div property, that div box will rotate. So you can see the way your box is rotating and you know decide okay if once you have this um specific rotation, then you are satisfied with it. Okay. So you can just check okay. the transform properties. Okay. All right. So I think that is all the question I have for okay. now. No problem. Can, can let me try and let's see.